morning. Good morning. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie Collateral Beauty? <laughs> I knew he would because this, this actually, okay, so there's a character named Howard and he's played by Will Smith. Um, he was addressing his employees at the beginning of the movie and what he said, um, I should say asked rather, is what prompted me to give this particular speech about this particular object. Howard asked, what is your why? Um, Philip asked me the same thing. <laughs> so he actually, this kind of solidified when he asked me after class one day, solidified why I decided to talk about this particular object. And for you to understand why this seemingly unimportant document means so much to me, um, you must understand the tribulations that got me here standing in front of you. So you remember from my previous speech, I discussed my mom uh, being on welfare and we didn't have very much growing up. However, I didn't really get to talk about how bad it was. I didn't go into detail about how bad growing up was. Um, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. We're here for you. I'm not going to give you all the gory details. I wrote it down here, but I'm going to kind of summarize because it'll be too hard to talk about. <coughs> Let's just say that there was quite a, a lot of abuse after my father left, mostly because my mom blamed us. She blamed me and my sister for him leaving. It was our fault. Um, I think the earliest memory I had was around three, and it was my dad was uh, beating my mom really bad and my grandmother had to come and take her to the hospital. So, aside from that, my mother would leave us unattended and I'd stay with my sister at really young ages. We were in foster homes twice. Um, needless to say, she was also addicted to drugs and alcohol at the time. So for a child to witness all of that at such a young age, it was, it was hard, I didn't understand it. So I, I tried to do things that would you know, make her proud of me, which was how I became so focused on school. Not only did I want to make her proud, but it was something that I had control for me, like it's something that I could control outside of what was going on in the home. Um, <clears throat> My mom remarried. She remarried a man 10 years younger than her. Had my youngest sister. We moved to New Jersey. We were homeless in New Jersey. Um, I mean, what's homeless, though? I mean, to me, it was, uh, I'm not explaining this right. To me, homeless was waking up to some stranger putting all our stuff on the curb and just leaving and trying to find a place to sleep, which usually it ended up in a motel, paying a weekly rate, and just with the clothes on our backs. However, through all of that, I still managed to excel in school, back to the school. I was in a gate program. I received a scholarship. My mom received a scholarship, actually, for tuition so that I could attend a private school. Um, doing great. <clears throat> okay, so I had I had perfect attendance. I played basketball. I was in spelling bees. Um, I mentioned the gate program. I was basically involved in anything that I could be that so I could stay outside of home as much as I could. Um, I would love to share these types of awards with you, but as I had mentioned, everything kind of got set out, <laughs> which is why this piece of paper means so much to me because it's, it legitimizes and affirms, <coughs> affirms all of the things that I went through 
the things that I lost, I should say material things that I lost growing up. So it kind of is intertwined with my whys and why it's important to me. <clears throat> Um, a few statistics in regards to child abuse. The National Association, uh, per the National Association of Adult Survivors of Child Abuse, 60% of American children are exposed to violent, violence, crime, or abuse in their homes, schools, and communities. Almost one in 10 American children saw one family member assault another family member, and more than 25% have been exposed to family violence during their life. So I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Um, I'm 16 and my mom came into my room while I was sleeping and basically attacked me. I'm still not sure to this day what prompted her to go into a rage, but it was the last straw and it would be the last time we ever lived on that same roof. My middle sister and I were placed in our third foster home where we spent uh, just under two years. <clears throat> we, but we built such a bond with our foster family, I'm still in touch with many of them today. My foster mom and dad were very encouraging and supportive and they helped me continue to be successful throughout high school until my senior year. When I, well, when our time was up with that family, I had to move out. And so it was either get back in touch with my mom and like kind of beg her to stay with her so I could finish, finish school or get an apartment and work full time. So that's what I did. <clears throat> I refused, I refused to go back and live with her. Um, so ultimately I dropped out of high school the last, it was like halfway through my senior year and I was on the honor roll, I had AIDS and I just left, I left. But I did manage to get my GED a month after I was originally supposed to graduate and even though I had put my education on hold at that moment it, it's always it was always a priority which brings me to a quote from Confucius it does not matter how slow you go as long as you do not stop <clears throat> so I'm 20 and I began studying at CCBC in Essex it's in Maryland I was in a it was I was in a 40 relationship at that time uh, which resulted in me becoming a mother at age 22 so you can kind of do the math on that. <laughs> but um, I, I really thought at that point when that happened was history repeating itself. I felt like, I was scared that I was turning into my mom. Um, <laughs> and in some ways it kind of did. Uh, my son's father left us when he was six months old. And then shortly after we got into a really nasty custody battle. We are still not on good terms 16 years later. I did meet my future husband at 24, and he is actually the one that encouraged me to pick up where I had left off with my studies. So I was 26 when I earned my first associates in medical assisting. That's what I did for quite a while. I had finally proved my mother wrong when I, on that day. I proved her wrong. She used to ruthlessly say things like, you're never gonna accomplish anything, you know, um, or she would always tell us, me and my sisters, that you do realize that coming from an alcoholic parent or parents or a drug addicted, you have 50% chance of being just like them. And she would tell us that all the time, which actually she was, she was kind of right because I have two sisters, one who is addicted to alcohol, has an alcohol problem, and my middle sister is in a state penitentiary doing time for drug charges. So I'm kind of the only one that didn't go through it. But this is another reason why this is important to me, because it shows me that um, Take a deep breath, because you did an awesome your past, job. Like, it related to what you played in the beginning. Your past does not dictate mm -hmm. how you're going to live your life in the future. Mm -hmm. So I really, when I saw that, I was kind of happy because like, wow, well, you know, it makes a lot of sense with what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my 30s now. I became a Navy wife. My husband joined late. Um, 
we have kids. We have four kids now. I almost died with my last baby. Uh, I would share details, but it'd be too long for class. So, but what, that was another reason that propelled me to go back and go back again and pursue my nursing degree. So here I am, almost finished, graduate in May, uh, and then transferring. I became what they call a non-traditional student in 2014. I signed up, enrolled at college at Mesa at 35 years old. I excelled there, maintained a 4.0 average. Um, and according to an article in the Atlantic, the most significant shift is probably the massive growth in adult student population in higher education. 38% of those enrolled in higher education are over the age of 25, and one fourth are over the age of 30. So why did I do it? In the words of Michelle Obama, for me, education was power. But it was also the opportunity to show my kids that no matter what stage they are in life, they're capable of accomplishing their goals and dreams. Brings us to the present. I was inducted into the National Society of Collegiate Scholars April 26, 2016 and uh, by Theta Kappa in October 2016. It was humbling and reiterating. It was an affirmation of my efforts after all these years something my mother lacked providing to me, it provided me. A description found in the Association of College Honor Society states that the National Society of Collegiate Scholars is an honors organization that recognizes and elevates high achievers. NSCS members are deeply committed to scholarship, leadership, service, and integrity. Since having been inducted to both of these honor societies, my ambition has grown, and I have big plans for the future, which include applying to uh, PLNU and SDSU. California to earn my bachelor's and later on I hope to earn my master's at University of San Francisco. Um, I was recently uh, awarded the Outstanding Scholar Award from NSCS for my academic, uh, academic achievements, sorry, and I'm also the president so I coordinate for, uh, volunteer opportunities and meetings and different things like that. So, in conclusion, the certificate is a reminder of many of my whys, but it's also an indication that I haven't finished yet. This paper is representative of my not giving up. And I leave you with a few words from the late great Maya Angelou. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeat so you can know who you are, know what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it.